welcome back to my channel. So today I am back with another video and this time we're going to be talking about proper infection control. So this topic is actually really really important just because like literally this could make or break your career just because I'm pretty sure you guys have heard about like different salons that gave someone an infection to the point where they had to get their toe amputated or their finger amputated and you definitely do not want to be one of those people because you guys know that bad rumors are just rumors or even just you know it could be a fact negative things are gonna run faster than just positive things so if you were to give someone an infection I think we talked about this the other day you know if you were to give someone an infection they're gonna be so quick to run to other people and be like girl no don't you know don't go to her because she gave me an infection or you know don't go to her because I heard that such and such had to get their toe amputated and it might not be you know very serious to you I guess but these things can actually happen I know like here in my area a couple of years ago it was a new nail shop um not too far from me and they actually gave someone an infection on their toe i think she got a pedicure and they cut her and like she literally had to get almost her whole foot amputated so you want to make sure that you know you are very um how would i call it you want to make sure that you're really careful with things like this um so again the, t the topic is proper infection control so infection control is literally or y'all yeah, i want to stop saying literally so infection control is um it's just preventing from spreading um, diseases. So basically, um, it's going to include your sanitation, disinfection, and sterilization. So like sanitizing is when you wash your dishes, you're sanitizing your dishes is the same thing with your tools. When you sanitize your tools, you're going to just get soap and a brush and water and just, you know, remove any visible dirt from your tools whether it's dust whether it's you know a little bit of acrylic you know you're going to use that brush and some soap and water and just rinse them off and scrub them off a little bit that's going to be your sanitation step and that's exactly what the book says it says the first step of infection control method is to clean or you can call it sanitation sanitation to me sounds a little bit more professional and you know clean is just like clean but sanitation is more like professional as you as you can see but anyways the actual definition is um this is a mechanical process parentheses scrubbing um using soap and water or detergent and water to remove all visible dirt so again that could include dust or if you do hair it could be your um you know hair in your shears or in your comb so it's going to be the same thing whether you're using nail clippers nippers cuticle pushers um what else like foot files things like this you're going to make sure or you have to make sure that you are sanitizing these products before um you reuse them on someone else and after you sanitize your implements you're going to have to disinfect them so disinfect them is actually the second step of your infection control and disinfection i'm going to read the um, actual definition from the book but disinfection is the chemical process that uses specific products to destroy organisms or non-porous uh, surfaces. So a non-porous surface is basically anything that's like solid, like a sponge is um it's not gonna it's porous because it has like you know little holes in it. A buffer is gonna be porous. Um, a nail file is gonna be porous. So a non-porous uh, product is gonna be like a nail clipper, your combs, your nail clippers, your you know anything that's like a solid plastic or metal. So again, nail files cannot be disinfected. Nail buffers cannot be disinfected. Pedicure slippers cannot be disinfected. Um, toe separators cannot be disinfected. And the reason why I say that is because I know plenty of nail shops that will you reuse those um, toe separators and the pedicure slippers. And I know this firsthand, so that's why I'm saying that. But again, um, the first step is 
sanitizing which is literally just getting soap and water and a little brush and just rinsing off your nail clippers and all of your implements and then disinfection is actually disinfecting those um, implements so you want to make sure that first you do the sanitation process and then you do the disinfection process and for your um, disinfection process like I said you do have to use um, a chemical to be able to disinfect those products or those implements properly as you guys know in the nail industry we use Barberside. You can get this from Sally's. You can get it from Amazon. You can get it from almost anywhere. And this is just like a blue solution. I'm sure you guys have seen it. It's just a blue. Um, the, the bottle should be clear, but the actual liquid is blue. And you pour that into your water. And of course, you know, you just have to follow those directions that are on the bottle to make sure that you are mixing the um, chemical with the right amount of water. And then you just put your implements, which again, it's your um, nail clippers, your cuticle push all that you make sure that you put them into the barber side for about 10 minutes until um well really just for 10 minutes um no longer than 10 minutes because then your products will rest Alrighty, so that was the first method of infection control. Now there is a second one, which I mentioned earlier in the video, and that one is sterilization. So we don't really use sterilization in the salon. It's more common like in hospitals and in dentist's office, just because, you know, they are actually digging into people's skin and we're not, we're just kind of like on the surface of the skin or the nails. Um, so that's really the reason why we don't, you know, have to necessarily do that. Um, but the actual definition of sterilization is the process that completely destroys all microbial life including spores and then it also says that this is the most effective method of sterilization which uses high pressure steam autoclaves so i don't know if you guys have ever seen anything like this i'll leave a picture Um, in this video so you guys can see i know in some shops i have seen it looks like a little oven and they just put the stuff in there and i believe it as it also has like a purple or blue light in there and it's not as strong as the ones that they use but it is supposed to kind of sterilize your implements but again the most um common ones is just um, cleaning or sanitizing and disinfection and those two are just enough to be able to you know properly um, sanitize your implements so I'm gonna show you the actual way that I do it um, which is the most common way to do it so again the first thing I do is just sanitize and then we disinfect so again I'm gonna show you the whole process that I take and I hope you guys enjoy Alrighty, so that was the first method of infection control. Now there is a second one, which I mentioned earlier in the video, and that one is sterilization. So we don't really use sterilization in the salon. It's more common like in hospitals and in dentist's office just because you know they are actually digging into people's skin and we're not we're just kind of like on the surface of the skin or the nails um so that's really the reason why we don't you know have to necessarily do that um but the actual definition of sterilization is the process that completely destroys all microbial life including spores and then it also says that this is the most effective method of sterilization which uses high pressure steam autoclaves so i don't know if you guys have ever seen anything like this i'll leave a picture um in this video so you guys can see i know in some shops i have seen it looks like a little oven and they just put the stuff in there and i believe it as it also has like a purple or blue light in there and it's not as strong as the ones that they use but it is supposed to kind of sterilize your implements but again the most um common ones is just um, cleaning or sanitizing and disinfection and those two are just enough to be able to you know properly um, sanitize your implements so I'm gonna show you the actual way that I do it um, which is the most common way to do it so again the first thing I do is just sanitize and then we disinfect so again I'm gonna show you the whole process that I take and I hope you guys enjoy Alrighty, y'all, so I am back, and again, I'm going to be showing you how I sanitize and disinfect my implements. So here I have two cuticle pushers, a pair of nippers, 
and a no clipper that I just used. So remember, you wanna make sure that after you use these, you have like a separate little box to put them in. That way you know that they need to be disinfected. You do not, do not, do not, do not wanna use these on multiple people if they have not been sanitized and disinfected. So as you can see here, I have my bottle of Barber's Side. I do get the big one, which is a 64 fluid ounce bottle. And then I have my actual Barber's Side jar. So this one is a 32 ounce. And this one I got from, I believe, Sally's. Um, I can't remember how much it is, but I'll be sure to leave the link in the description. And I was um, just reading the instructions and for every 32 ounces of water, you have to mix in two ounces of the actual Barber's Side um, chemicals. So I've already pre-filled my Barber's Side jar with water. Um, I didn't do it here just because um, it's too tall and it won't fit in the sink. And then I also have a small little measuring cup to make sure, you know, that I'm doing exactly two ounces because as we mentioned earlier, if you don't mix it correctly, you're not going to get the proper disinfection that you want. Um, so on the bottle, it just basically gives you like all the instructions. It also gives you the ingredients. Um, what else? Um, it has, you know, in case of an emergency, in case you get it in your eyes, it tells you what to do, um, how to store it, um, how to dispose of it. What else? Um, it tells you that, let's see. Um... Okay, it has the personal uh, personal protection. So it says, when handling items sold with blood or body fluids, use appropriate barrier protection, such as disposable latex gloves, gown mask, and eye covering. So, you know, if you were to cut someone and your uh, implements, like your cuticle pusher and nippers, you know, had blood on them. So you would want to make sure that you take the correct precautions to prevent from, you know, spreading any type of disease or anything um, that might be, you know, in that person's blood um let's see and then it also has directions on disposing of infectious materials and it just says blood and other body fluids must be autoclaved and disposed of according to the federal state and local regulations for infectious infectious waste disposal and then it just has different things on here that are pretty important um, but again, what I do is I just mix two ounces of the actual Barberside with my water. So it's really plain and simple. But remember, you might get a different Barberside or your, your jar might be a little bit different. Maybe it's a little bit smaller or taller, whatever the case may be. But whatever you do, you want to make sure that for every 32 ounces of water, you mix it with two ounces of um, Barberside. But before we actually do that, we're going to go ahead and sanitize our implements. So again, I have my implements here in my hand, and then I do have a small little brush. I'm just gonna turn the water on and I'm just gonna rinse them off. And then I'm gonna go ahead and wet my little brush. And these I just get from my local nail supply store, but you could find them um, on eBay or Amazon. So now I'm just gonna get my soap. Remember, all you need to sanitize is just water and soap. I'm gonna squirt the soap on my brush, run it under the water. And then I'm just gonna scrub my implements. Make sure that I get at the tip and even the handle because you know, of course, your hands can be dirty um, after working. And then also something else that I mentioned is that you wanna make sure that you wash your hand after each client. If not, you know, keep um, some hand sanitizer at your station. That way you can sanitize your hands after each client. Okay, so after we just scrub them, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse them off and make sure that again, you rinse them off before you actually put them in the Barberside formula. And then I always also put these brushes in there as well. That way they can disinfect too. I'm gonna go ahead and just put them over to the side for just a second. Okay, so now again, I have a little measuring cup and on this side is the ounces. So there's one ounce, two ounce, three and four. So we need two ounces. So I'm going to go ahead and fill it up all the way up to the number two. Alrighty, so I'm going to just, let's see, where's the two? Okay, right there. 
So I'm gonna make sure that I pour two ounces in there. As you can see, it's at the number two. I don't know if you guys can really tell. And then I usually always just store my Barberside bottle in my little cabinet over to the side. So I'm just gonna sit it on the floor for now. And then after that, what you wanna do is just literally pour your Barberside into the jar. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this little measuring cup out. And then usually I leave my Barberside jar out um, right over here that way I don't forget about it because if you leave your implements in there for too long they will rust so now what you want to do you could put some gloves on when you're doing this because remember you know you don't want it to splash in your face or anything but I'm just gonna do this just because I'm recording this video um, and I don't want to take up too much time but I'm just gonna drop them in there make sure that they are completely immersed when you put them in here and then I'm gonna go ahead and let it down. You could set a timer, um, but you just wanna leave them in there for 10 minutes. And then your water, your barberside water, you wanna switch it out at least once a week, if not when visibly, visibly cloudy. So if you see, you know, stuff floating in your water, you wanna make sure that you switch it out. And if it still looks pretty clean, then just, you know, change it once a week. So now I'm gonna go ahead and leave my jar over to the side. And after 10 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and take them out of there. Alrighty, so it's been 10 minutes now. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out the implements. So all I have to do, hold on. I wanna make sure you guys can see. So all I have to do is just pull this up and then I'm gonna go ahead and put them back into the sink just so I can rinse them off. And then of course you wanna make sure that you have on gloves or you can use some type of to uh, tongs to take them out, but I just pulled them out and then I'm just gonna rinse them off. And then you just wanna either let them air dry or you can pat them dry. And then that's pretty much it. So after this, you can go ahead and use some on uh, your other clients because they have been sanitized and disinfected. Alrighty, so those were the steps that I take for proper infection control. But before I let you guys go, I'm gonna give you a few more tips that I found here in the book. And basically it's given us some tips on disinfecting large surfaces. So this would be like your table, your armrest, your chairs. Of course, we can't soak them in Barberside, but they also sell Barberside wipes. And all you have to do is literally just follow the directions on the back of the bottle, but you know, just simply just clean your table with the Barberside wipes. And it's the same solution that you would use for your implements, but with this one, it's just white. And then also whenever you are disinfecting your implements, which will be your nail clippers, nippers, all that stuff, you want to make sure that you clean them really good before you actually immerse them into the barber side. And then also we have a couple other tips, which is um, it says use only on pre-cleaned hard non-porous surfaces. So again, non-porous um, is just like nail clippers, anything that's like solid, metal, or plastic. Um, you don't wanna use this on files or buffers. Those you will throw away after each client because they are not um, disinfectable or sanitizable, whatever you wanna call it. Um, let's see, it also says, um, it says maybe used on implements such as, um, files but those are made out of metal so files that are made out of metal or glass or even ceramic and then it says um or indicator or like if it indicates that they can be sanitized which the ones that i use are the kind that you just throw away after each client um and then also it says to read the manufacturer's directions and follow them carefully and then we have a uh, tip number two which is always wear gloves and safety glasses when handling disinfection solutions you don't want to you know just throw something in the barber side and then it splashes back so make sure that you are being careful and then also number three is to always dilute product according to the instructions on the label so you when you get your bottle of barber side you want to make sure that you read the instructions to make sure that you're adding the the right amount of water and the right amount of the barber side and then number five is says to disinfect large surfaces such as tabletops, carefully apply disinfectant onto the pre-cleaned surface and allow it to remain wet for 10 minutes. So again, you can get the actual um, wipes. They also sell them at Sally's um, or you could probably even find them online. Number six is um, the entire implement 
include the including the handle must be completely immersed in the solution so you want to make sure that like if you put a pair of nail clippers in there you want to make sure that don't like don't just put the tip in there you want to make sure that the entire nail clipper nail clipper goes in there same thing for like nail brushes or um tip what is it tip cutters or just nippers or cuticle pushers you want to make sure that the entire implement goes into the water um, number seven is change the disinfectant according to the instructions on the label. If the disinfectant is not changed as instructed, it will no longer be affected and may begin to promote the growth of pathogens. Pathogens is an actual infect or sorry bacteria um, which can be spread. So then number eight is just the proper disinfection of a pedicure tub. And basically that just tell us to let the solution just kind of run in the pedicure tub for 10 minutes um, unless the product tells you otherwise. And those were just a few different tips um, that will help you make sure that you are properly sanitizing and disinfecting your implements. So again, this you know whole process is really important because it literally can make or break your career you don't want to be that person that gives someone an infection because you did not properly sanitize and disinfect your implements and then remember your nail files and your buffers you do want to make sure that you dispose of those after each client those are not reusable unless the package tells you but a lot of the time all of the files are a one-time use um but yeah i think that's pretty much it so if you guys have any more questions be sure to comment down below and let me know you know any things that you still may have questions about and i'll be more than glad to help so as always i hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to like comment and subscribe follow me on instagram and twitter at getno32 and i'll see you guys next time